You just watched a VHS copy of Robots Rising you found while cleaning out your parents' garage. And now you have the urge to build some solar-powered analog robots. Lucky you found this video. Here I'll be going over the little circuits that make solar-powered beam robots possible, a little bit of the theory behind it, and what you can do with these little circuits. So let's go. So the first question we might have is, why do we need any special circuitry at all? Why can't we just take this little solar cell and put it onto your robot in the place of a battery and call it a day? Well, if we look at this, almost three volts, which is similar to what two AA batteries would produce. The problem is this does it at a tiny fraction of the current, milliamps maybe. If you were connect to connect this to a motor, that voltage would drop to zero pretty quickly. So we need a way of taking the voltage that the cell provides and convert it into current. Luckily, there's a pretty easy way to do that. If we take a little capacitor like this and we connect it to our solar cell, it will charge up. And we can see, if we connect our multimeter here, we can watch the voltage slowly climbing. And this will get up to whatever voltage our solar cell is rated for. So all we need is a little circuit that watches this and either after a certain amount of time or whatever other conditions you might have, it allows the power to go into the rest of your robot and your robot will move with bursts of speed. And that is what a solar engine does. It is the little circuit that watches this part and powers the rest of the robot when certain conditions are met. First, let's look at this little graph here. So this is the solar system capacitor kind of circuit or system. So when a capacitor is first connected to a solar cell, it is basically a dead short. An empty capacitor has almost no resistance. So it will be pull the voltage right down and the current will be really high or, you know, pretty high for a solar cell. As the capacitor starts to fill up, the amount of current going through will drop and the amount of voltage will rise. And you can see as we get up to here, it kind of flattens out at whatever the max voltage of your solar cell is. So a solar engine will look at some of these parameters and then decide on the best time to run whatever load you have connected to it. So there's three different types. Type one is voltage based. So it will just watch until a certain voltage is reached and then it will dump the capacitor across the load. These types are the simplest and easiest to build, but they tend to have some problems, if, especially if it's not very light out, if the solar cell is not getting a lot of light, it might never get to this voltage and your robot might never do anything. The second type solves this problem while introducing some of its own, and that is a time type. So after a certain type, amount of time, it will just dump the capacitor across the load. It doesn't care how much charge is in there, it will just do it every minute, every two minutes, whatever you set it for. This type is not super efficient because you always have to be running the timing circuitry, but they're useful in certain situations and they're relatively easy to build. The third type is the most complicated and in theory the best, but there's not that many designs out there that actually work. And that is current based. When that capacitor is completely full, the solar cell cannot put any more energy into it effectively and the current will just flatten out and nothing will happen. When that happens, these solar engines will see this curve, they'll see it flattening out, and then they'll dump the capacitor across the load. Now this should, in theory, work in any light condition because even if there's not very much light hitting the solar cell, this will still flatten out at some point, either a lower or higher voltage, and then your solar engine will still work while also making sure that there's going to be as charged as it can be in any situation. These are hard to build and not many good designs out there exist. Um, so today we're actually gonna be looking at the type one, the by far the easiest and most common design. So if our solar engine is gonna be voltage sensitive, we need to find a way to sense the voltage. A couple different ways to do this, but the most common one in beam robotics was traditionally to use a small chip called the Panasonic 1381, which was a voltage supervisor chip. So it would detect the voltage when it got to a certain point, it would apply a high voltage to one of its pins, and then when it dropped below a certain point, it would apply a low voltage to that pin. Unfortunately, this little chip is no longer in production, but there is a basically drop-in replacement called the MCP112. There's one problem with these chips though, is that if they were just to turn on at this voltage, let's say this is three volts, the motor would instantly start drawing current and it would drop this voltage way down. 
Now that chip will see that drop in voltage and will just not apply a voltage to its output pin anymore and the circuit will turn off. So in the worst case, you just end up oscillating back and forth. Luckily, these chips have a little bit of hysteresis built into them. Hysteresis? Hysteresis. Hysteresis. And this is just to stop it getting close to that switching point and then switching on and off a couple times. But it's only a couple millivolts. So what we have to do is come up with a way to make that stay on for a lot longer. Maybe one or two volts of difference. So then our robot can get some meaningful work done. So here we can see probably the most common utilization of this little chip here. Uh, this circuit is called the Miller Solar Engine. I'm guessing named after the guy who invented it. But let's run through how it works. So we have a solar cell here, and that charges the main capacitor. As this charges up, the little voltage supervisor will see the main capacitor voltage through the positive, which is directly connected, and through the negative, which is connected through a diode here. And then there's actually another little capacitor, a small one, across these poles here, which is important. So as this voltage rises, it'll eventually get to the trigger voltage of the chip here. Let's say it's three volts, it'll be a bit higher because of the diode. When that happens, this will output a positive, a high signal here, which will turn on this transistor, which will allow our motor to run. Now pretty much as soon as the motor starts up, the voltage will start to drop in the main capacitor as the inrush current drains that down quite a bit. When that happens, this small capacitor here will not be able to discharge to the rest of the circuit because of this diode, effectively separating it off from the main capacitor here, and this will slowly discharge only through the actual IC. So the voltage this sees will be significantly higher than the rest of the voltage, and as this drains out, it will keep that high until that voltage inside of this one gets below whatever its turn off point is and then the circuit will reset and start over again. The great thing about this is we can tune the size of this capacitor to control how long the circuit stays on for. A really big one here will mean this sees a higher voltage for longer and keeps the circuit running. A really small one means we can tune it to have short pulses if we want. Um, there's also a resistor here. This isn't strictly necessary depending on your design. Um, if you have a less efficient or a lower gain transistor, uh, you might not use one at all, um, or if you're switching something like a logic gate, you might use a pretty big one because you don't want to waste the power. So we now have a working solar engine. What can we do with it? Well, we could use it to switch on the electronics for a more complicated robot, or we could double it up like I did in a previous video to build a little light-seeking robot. However, there is a beam robot, sort of, that uses a single motor and solar engine. So let's build one of those. Calling these guys of robots might be a little bit of a stretch. I would fit them into the same category as something like the Strun Beast, kind of a self-powered mobile artwork. But they are still a really interesting little thing to build, and you can easily build it in an afternoon. The beam name for these guys is a Simit, and you'll see later on, but they're pretty much completely symmetrical. The idea is they kind of just scoot along in any direction, and then when they bump into something, they tip over, and then they can move in the opposite direction. I freeformed a little Miller solar engine here um, that will be hidden up on the top and then I used a motor from a uh, CD player which I used to be able to find old CD players super easily but they're much harder to find nowadays. I scratched up the surface of the motor, I think they have some sort of coating on it, and then soldered the capacitors directly to the motor. I used three of them set kind of equally around the outside and then when this is done the base of the motor or the motor shaft will touch the ground and it will tip over and lean onto those capacitor ends and then it can kind of scoot around like that. You want these to kind of balance almost straight up and down but leaned over on two of them so when they hit something they'll be able to move over and then scoot backwards. I bent this little ring on the top out of some brass I had and it acts as a positive connector for my capacitors as well. And then I soldered this solar cell onto the top with some solid core wire, so it will be pretty secure without having to uh, glue it on or anything like that. And this here is the finished robot. So you can see I bent these capacitors down so it would just be easy to tip over in any direction. And then when this scoots along, it'll bump into something, and then in theory it'll go back the other way.
And that's it for another video. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you do build your own robot using any of these things, let me know. See you next time.